She's reclusive, a mystery. She communicates in type. A family trip was planned, with the Antarctic in sight. One day she's gone, disappeared without a trace. It's up to her daughter, a reality to face. An enigma to solve. B was dead set. Where, Where did, did you go, go Bernadette? Cool. Cool? God damn but, it, Google. Yeah, exactly, Google. I hate Google sometimes. But, you know, it's better than Bing Amazon. would have helped us. No, I hate Bing. <laughs> I hate Bing. <laughs> but it's funny you say that because... Uh-huh. Brittany. I'm the queen of transitions. You are. <laughs> I think we need to get you a crown. Let's go to Burger King. <laughs> get you a crown from Burger King. Uh, Just kidding. King, not queen. Well, maybe we can I ask I need to them. go to Dairy Queen. Oh, true. Do they have crowns at Dairy Queen? Um, I don't know, actually. Now that you say we that, hand I'm out tiaras. DQ, listen. Hit Look, us listen. Look, listen. We're going to be your new um, brand managers. Let's go. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never saw my life going this way, but you know mm. what? Uh tell you i mean like when the road leads you there right you gotta follow it oh the places you will go mm. 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 dr seuss yeah ah, ah nice nice yeah <laughs> so <laughs> one fish two fish oh yes green fish blue fish is that Red a part fish, of it fish blue fish sorry i didn't read that one that much did i actually i, think I read green eggs own, and ham i think green eggs and ham and one fish two fish are the only ones i've i have read oh really i see yeah. okay green eggs and ham i've read cat in the hat um, car, go car, go. I forget what it's called. Mm-hmm. So this is like dogs driving cars. It's a Dr. Seuss book. No, oh, huh. um, that doesn't seem very Dr. Seuss. I should I actually have a copy upstairs. I should totally get it after this and show you. Let with Brit, let's go. Yeah, go, oh, go. <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh my god, reading Dr. Seuss. You know what? I just felt like when I did that. Um, pointing Chris, at me yeah Chris Traeger from Parks and Rec oh yeah Ann Perkins <laughs> Ann Perkins oh the my god amazing Ann Perkins yeah I love that character <sighs> he plays it so well he does I that show I've been re-watching it I'm like in, I'm so proud of you oh <laughs> uh, well yeah I, I know you've seen it before yeah. but it's such a good show it is it's like every time I watch it I think like like cause you know how sometimes like you you stop watching a show and you're kind of like, well, it was amazing, but you know, you don't really think about it all that often. And then you, oh, no, I think about Parks and Rec all the time. Well, well, that's what I mean. Parks and Rec is not like that at all. I think about it all the time. Like, yeah. I love that show. And even like being away from it for a while, I'm like, I really need to rewatch it. And then I rewatch mm-hmm. it and I'm like, this is magical. magical. Like, it's just such a good experience. I love it. Leslie Nope is goals. I, I want to be her so her. badly. Yeah. She's like my fictional hero. Yeah. A hundred percent. She's a bit of a hoarder. Yeah. A bit of a nutcase. <laughs> yes. But I love it. Love oh. every moment. Yes. Leslie, nope. 2020. All right. 2020. 2020. <laughs> yeah. So, Brittany, what are we talking about today? Well, today we are talking about the book called Where'd You Go, Bernadette by mm-hmm. Maria Sample. Sample? Sample? Simple? Sa- Sample. A- a- <laughs> elephant. Sample. Oh, God. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> S-E-M-P-L-E. You got this. You got this. Elephant. Eh. Elephant. Sample. Okay. Yeah, it's sample. Sample. Not sample, but sample. Sample. <laughs> <laughs> God, my fucking coal region <laughs> accent. I <Cole> hate region. it. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, from those Appalachian mountain range. <laughs> you don't... I did it again. What? I looked over. <laughs> you always look away from me. Why do I do that? I don't know. Maybe because you feel awkward staring into my eyes. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, my gosh. It's early in the morning, folks. I'm going to mm-hmm. take a swig of water. Coffee, 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 coffee. Turkey Hill definitely has the best coffee for um, driving. Boop. Um, yeah, like gas stations and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I find that Wawa usually burns oh, their coffee. Oh, do they? I, I feel do. like it. I you know, know, I don't usually get hot coffee. For, I'm not a big coffee person. If I do get mm-hmm. coffee, I get a lot of cream and sugar. And to me, that's like, well, I get it at all, you know? Yeah. So that's why I usually get iced coffee because... It's not really coffee. It's so yummy. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, I like my coffee like I like my men. Large and black. <laughs> I knew that you were going to say black. So. Mm, That's so funny. Delicious. Oh, I have to show you a picture real quick. Maybe I'll make this our episode artwork because it's the funniest photo I've ever seen. No. I was looking. So no. I was going to um, s- like I'm trying to scan my photos and I was going through them yesterday. and I found this picture of my brother with this kid. 
That kid. <gasps> I love him. He is a meme and a half. Seriously, he looks like like so Holy much attitude. Shit. The glasses. Mm. I love this kid. He's like he is a he is a kid who was raised by his grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, mm. Yeah. Child. Yes. <laughs> I love that kid. And I told my brother, I texted him, I was like, I wonder where this kid is in life. <laughs> like, I just want to oh meet God. him. What was his name? I don't, Brian doesn't remember. Brian! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian! Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. Yeah, he does. That's the name of my brother, folks. Okay. And also our biggest fan, Brian. Our biggest fan. <laughs> Holla, hey. Wow, did I really just say that? Anyway, so. What are you doing? <laughs> well, you know, it, it's early. What are we doing? What, what, oh. Oh, oh. my phone. Okay, Sorry. good. I was afraid it was going to just like slide off the pillow and fall to the floor, but it didn't. So, yes. Uh, anyway, yes, folks, we're talking about Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple. Who knows? <laughs> um, and, uh, today's episode is brought to you by the one and only audible.com. Yeah. You vis- <laughs> if you visit our free trial link, audibletrial.com <laughs> slash b-a-b-a-t i forgot it there for a second you'll get a free 30-day trial to audible.com as well as a free audiobook of your choice and you don't have to worry about memorizing that link because it is in our show notes oh ah, along in our show notes you will find links to all of our bullshits mm-hmm. um i stole that line from fucking last podcast on the left oh good Their job vernacular good job. is slowly coming into my word of speak yeah i guess that uh, happens to me too a way of speaking there we go not my word of speak mm-hmm. anyway <laughs> all that shit is in there um you got your audible link which is the top leading provider of the audio medium for books which mm-hmm. is pretty cool i don't know if you said that i did not but no oh, we'll plug it again there yeah. you go hey audible. audible we're doing what you ask of us <laughs> <laughs> um they we also have our facebook instagram uh, all of our episodes are now available on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank you, Brittany. Woohoo! <laughs> I spent like an hour. I was like, eh, just it's, copy. It's all way these more time. Links. Yeah, it's way more time consuming than you'd expect, well, especially because but... we did it in like season three. Right. So, exactly. Oh. Right. Um, so get involved. Tell us your thing. Tell us your things. Uh, we are also arson. What is wrong with me? <laughs> we are also looking for writers. So anyone who has uh, short stories, um, five to 700 words, longer works can be broken up into parts. And you want us to read it for a special segment that will, you know, eventually come out. Um, let us know. Shoot us an email because I'm thinking by the time this episode airs, we're going to be pretty into yeah. our other project. Um, Will we? We'll be at least announcing it. Yeah, we'll definitely be announcing it. I don't know. Wide oh, oh I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, Wide um, scale. yeah, we we might be. I don't know if this early, but yeah, you're right. We we might be starting that. So we'll we'll definitely be announcing that soon. And also, yeah, like like we said, uh, shoot us an email. Mm-hmm. Um, Get involved. Hey, yeah. Jamal. <laughs> Jamal already messaged me, a friend of mine. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, ma- yeah. That's the thing. Email us because in our emails and our show notes, it's bad as twilight. At gmail.com. Ooh, excuse oh, excuse me. <laughs> you know, Brittany, I Sorry. respect you because honestly, like, I don't know anybody who just like freely burps like you. And I honestly, like, I've always, like, the other day, I just belched in my car and I was like, I wish Brittany was here. <laughs> just because, appreciate this with me. Because honestly, like, I do it all the time and, like, my little, like, polite self is like, I'm not going to burp out loud. It's a bodily function. Everyone does it. I agree. Like, just like everyone poops. Right. In case you didn't know. Everyone farts. Mm-hmm. You know, just get over it, folks. This is a support group for Belchers Anonymous. I <laughs> Those think that- who never felt free to burp out loud. <laughs> yes, exactly. But anyway, my point being, folks, that if you email us, uh, we'll tell you what this uh, will pertain to uh, to see if, you know, whoa, what's happening? We have to email that guy back. Yes, Adam. we do. Yes, we do. Adam. Adam. <laughs> I think that's his name. I think it is. Adam! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you everything yeah. that it's about because... Um, to see if you want... There is a yeah. contingency to yes. it. So, um, hit us up. Done. All right. Ooh, all right. So, we're doing part one of Where'd You Go, Bernadette. This, part, uh, this book is broken into seven parts. Yes. The first one is by far... Far the longest. Yeah. Well, part seven's pretty long too. I for I don't remember no, how part long. Part seven's pretty short. Oh, is it? Yeah. What am I thinking? I don't Wasn't know. there like a really long part? It doesn't matter. We'll get to it when we get to it. But uh, 
Uh, yeah, part one is super long. It's almost 100 pages. I think it's like 95 pages or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's 100 on the dot. Oh, really? I believe so. But this book is oh, 326 right. pages. So this is a third of the book is part one. Yeah. Um. So we're going to... There's, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot in here. We're not going to touch everything. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking more like because the way this book works like yeah. it's probably just a jump around thing we just talk about you know yeah um because to be honest with you i made a point in reading this book um just because it being what it is mm-hmm. i didn't really mark that much yeah so um so here. this book in, in case um you're not reading along with us it's a series of letters and emails and notes and all this type of stuff that are sent back and forth from um B's mother to various people and various people to each other. Uh, so my first biggest gripe about this is how is B getting all of the information that are being corresponded between outside parties? So I was wondering that too, but I'm thinking that um, that either she's like super smart and then she knows like how to get this information. So she's like hacking other people's computers? Look, hacking's the end thing. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I did wonder that, too. But honestly, like... Do you think like, it'll be told us at the end? It either will be revealed or, honestly, like, that's never something I thought about. Like, I don't know if it should concern us. It's really irking me, though. Really? It's super irking me. I could see that, though. Yeah. It, it didn't bother me at all. I... Because... Um, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that, but yeah, it just, it doesn't, it didn't bother me at all. Um, but yeah. So, quick summary of book one, or part one. Um, it, it's a introductory part. Yeah. We are absolutely swamped with people uh, in book one. And um, okay. how it looks, not present day, but we are literally thrown right into the middle of this. There, yeah. there is no legitimate beginning uh the very first scene is them sitting down our main characters b uh who is a 14 year old super smart girl uh her mother bernadette and her father elgin Uh, um eugene yeah let's figure this out i think it's elgin elgin um hang on elgin we're gonna find this out yeah i know um Uh, i'm pretty sure it's elgin we can do this oh my god the more we wait, the lo- the more awkward I feel. Oh my god! <laughs> You're struggling over there, my friend. <laughs> I needed to breathe so badly. Elgin, Elgin, so it's it is Elgin. Elgin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, they're sitting at a table talking about um, B's grades mm-hmm. and uh, how uh, B's parents had promised her. That if she had gotten straight A's or S's. straight S's, uh, <laughs> she uh, would get to choose a, something of her choice, or is it a trip of her choice? Uh, just... Something of her choice, okay. and uh, they were kind of hoping she would forget about the pony she always wanted. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she decides she wants a family trip to Antarctica. Yes. Woo-hoo! Which so, must be done over Christmas break because mm-hmm. that is Antarctica summer. I'm learning a lot about Antarctica in this little, you know, book. <laughs> Bernadette is one of. Or, okay, when I say Bernadette, I'm not. I'm referring to the book, but I'll make mm-hmm. sure to clarify that. But um, this book really like is one of those books that's very information heavy in a way that just gets me so excited. Like it's very detailed in its descriptions of like. So I looked up Antarctica and this, this, and this. Like, it just, like, has lots of facts thrown at you. Like, it really seems to know, like, not things that matter. I get it. But. I get like, it. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But I also don't think that this is what how people talk. Which no, is another no, no, thing no. that irks me about this book. It doesn't, or I don't know if people necessarily talk like this. I don't think, like, that's another thing. The way these emails are written they're written like somebody would write a book. And if I know anything, yeah. I know that people who even want to write books don't know how to format a book. Like I was in um, a novel writing class mm-hmm. and people like would format their writing. I'd be like, okay, like, like it's, it's different obviously when you're being like free form and you yeah. want to format how you want, but like, this is like legitimately just wrong. Like, but like, <laughs> like, so people write wow, every day emails. <laughs> well, it's true. Like there's like a way like to have your quotes and stuff. Like when you have a new, like 
when you're writing a new person talking, you make mm-hmm. a new paragraph. Like obviously in books, they don't always do oh, that. I see what you mean. Yeah, stuff okay. like that or putting quotation marks. Um, it, it's too much to get into. But anyway, what I'm For saying is that emphasis versus actual. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. and but, this no, book, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, in this book, like, they'll write emails as if they're like novels, and I'm like, and and again, it doesn't bother me because I think you know, um, I think this is not. I don't think this is. I, I'm gonna pose this to you. Do you think that this is meant to be in a different universe? No, because I don't. Because of so. the way that they talk. No, I don't. I I honestly don't think so. I mean, think of something. I hate to compare it to this. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna do it. Um, think of something like Gilmore Girls. Have you ever watched that? No. Okay. Well, good because <laughs> that show, the way they talk. Oh no! Because I like, know people who love that show are diehard I, fans. Sorry, but I effing hate that show. <laughs> like I, I remember people would love it, and so you know, it was some a show people watched. So I always wanted to watch it. And I remember I sat down to watch it, like at a young age too, like mm-hmm. thirteen or fourteen, I guess maybe if it was on then. It was I was definitely a teenager, a younger teenager. Mm-hmm. And I sat there and I'm like, "Where's Tatiana? She's gonna she would understand how people from LA speak." And true, they're yeah. from LA in this book. Yeah, Tatiana, Tatiana. But Get yeah, <laughs> the way that they speak in Gilmore Girls, like because I know they talk fast and they really. Yes. Like, oh my god! But where are they from, Gilmore Girls? I think it's Connecticut. I Connecticut. think it's somewhere like, um, I think it's Connecticut, like in that region. I forget. I forget what it's. Connecticut's called. north. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know my states. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's north. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't even know all fifty of them. But... New England area. That's, oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. okay, 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 I, okay, okay. I'm pretty sure, but anyway. Um, so that's what I think of. But like with Gilmore Girls, like for me, it's like a breaking thing. For this isn't because mm-hmm. I guess I've read a lot of novels that, like, okay, so this is the difference between you and I. I've noticed is that like I very much appreciate like the form sometimes more. Where you're like, oh my god, no! Like I can't do yeah. it. Like and so, and I understand I'm exhausted. that. Yeah, I reading was, this oh. book is exhausting. Oh really? Yes. I'm, oh, it's not this exhausting. This is not for a me. brain candy book for anyone no. looking for brain candy. But the thing is, I see, and I'm very interested to have this conversation with you because when I went into it, I was kind of nervous because of what you'd said to me about like the form, mm-hmm. and. Um, Again, I just just being different readers, like it didn't bother me at all. But I know you said you just had a hard time getting through part one. Oh, it was it was way too long. Yeah. Um, it was it was a little long for my taste. Okay, but. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me like do a really quick summary about this chapter. Yeah. So, um, or part rather. Um, yeah. yeah part. So we have the emails going back and forth between various parties, and B is kind of. She, it feels like she's reading them and then making commentary in her own mind. So, yeah, yeah. um, there are like it's differentiated in the written book because there's like a little asterisk in the middle of the page, yeah, and then it starts with I, yeah, yeah. So, that's you know, when uh, B is talking, um, everything else it's like an email form, it's to and from, and this is why I kind of feel that it's a little bit of an AU. Uh, alternate universe because a lot of the things that are said between two friends are through email not through texting not through calling um this is like the email is the primary way of communication in this world which yeah isn't necessarily in our world yeah um i was wondering that too actually yeah so yeah. It's, it's very weird it's very clunky it feels very um CYA constantly covering your ass constantly um so that's why we do it in the business world that's why we always communicate via email Mm -hmm. um not just phone because you want to cover your ass when you're working with like for me I'm working with people in other countries right and I need to know exactly what's going on and if I pay them in USDs when they're meant to be paid in euro um but I have an email saying USD, then my ass is covered, you know? Right, right, so right. So that's why we always communicate via email. Yeah. That was a little... Well, but it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So all the conversations in here do feel like covering your ass. 
Yeah, and I now that I'm thinking about it, it does kind of make sense. I'm thinking like about um, the character. I think her name is Su Lin. Su Lin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she is constantly emailing Audrey. That's like a consistent thing. And I think like I thought about that too, and I was like, I guess it makes sense because she works at Microsoft. Friends, though. Well, I actually so I with the girlfriend group that I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. Like we usually we don't really text at all. We usually email back and forth. With you and Tatiana, I would. Yeah. And perhaps as the generational thing, they're all a lot older than me. Like, and so they yeah, email but my before. mom texts and calls. She never emails. My mom never texts, usually. Did your mom emails? Yeah, she emails all the time. I mean, she does text, but she prefers email much more. Oh, no, so my think, mom doesn't touch email. Well, I was going to say, I think it, it could be either, I was going to say a generational thing, which I think is part of it, but then you're saying your mom doesn't do it, so I think it just It might be depends. also a regional thing. Right, yeah. You know, because we didn't, like, uh, I don't know. It's so weird and confusing, but I didn't, I feel that it's slightly, maybe because this is a satire, it's supposed to, f- okay. Well, well, that's <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me. Go back to the beginning and summarize this damn part. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Should we say the title? It's called Bernadette and the Nats, I believe. And the Nats. Yeah. So this very first part, we are learning Versus about the Bernadette's um, relationship to all the other people that is involved with um, Bree's, B's school. Mm-hmm. So B is one of those, at those, one of those hoity-toities, um, schools there's new age ones that don't give grades they give letters like s is surpasses excellence yeah yeah a is achieves excellence and w is working towards excellence and that's their grading system which is um bullshit (laughs) in my opinion not because i disagree with uh not putting a number on things but also if you're a child and you don't know where you are like how you when need you have that a, when yeah you, if you have a w and how, how do you know where to work like it's how much ki- more effort do you need to like, yeah i don't know where the it's kind yeah. of like um the best way i can compare it and sorry but like i watch a lot of top chef and in that show mm-hmm. in the beginning a lot of times they focus because there's so many people they're yes. focusing really on the people who are really doing good in the challenges or the people who are failing miserably and what yeah. ends up happening is that for a good chunk of episodes there are people on there like who just do not really get recognized until mm-hmm. very late into the game like because yeah. they don't know how to, they don't know they don't get any feedback because they don't yeah. go to the judges so um that's what i thought of when you said that like and i agree with you but and- also she's 14 though right and she's 14 yeah. she's 14 she should be getting through she that. needs some structure Yes, yeah. she needs a structure, and I I don't I don't know maybe it's because I'm not a teacher. Um, well, you know what you know what here's what I'll say I agree with you, but I also will disagree in the smallest sense in that every kid's different, every yeah, kid learns that's different. That's very true, you know. So, but I agree. I do think kids need structure, but at the same time, every kid's different. So I, yeah, because yeah, you know, look at over at Switzerland and they don't have that, and I don't I don't I don't get it. <laughs> it's not something I grew up with. Yeah. But anyways, so uh, Bernadette's relationship with all these, like, helicopter parents. They are oh helicopter parents. Oh, my God. Um, and she's not. They moved from L.A. to Washington. And we don't know, like, the background of that just yet in this part. We just know that... It was, um, I think we do. Didn't they say because of his job? Well, yes, because of his job, but we don't know anything about Bernadette's oh, history. No, That's no, what no, I meant. No. But, yeah, yeah. um... Because that was very much a part of it as well. but And it's kind of hinted at, but we don't know. Yeah. It's mainly because, like you said, Elgin, Elgin. Elgin's job. Yes, Elgin. Yeah. So, and he works for Microsoft. Yes. Um. So, they get there, and, like, these catty bitches. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Sulin and... Audrey. Which, Sulin is not as bad as Audrey. No, Sulin is... Yeah. Okay, so they are those, like, plastics. Yeah. You know, like... Um, Adults. So, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. fucking... Audrey, who's a bully, she is a oh she's a God. fucking beast. She and she ropes poor little Su Lin. Who? <laughs> okay, yeah. Confession: I've read much further than I should have, <laughs> and ooh, Su Lin. No, Su don't Lin. say that. Stop. <laughs> I'm just like. So um. Oh, is this is this the chapter where they run over her foot? Yes. 
and they just well we don't know if they did or not i mean i'm pretty sure they did i but i i, I burned through these parts honestly well, god these, okay these were so good like yeah i'm i am enjoying this book so far yeah it is very heavy though in the first chapter yeah. i don't know where it ends and where it begins well it's in see okay so i know you don't like stuff like that i love stuff like this like i from like page one or maybe not page one page two i was in um but i will say like so when she runs over her foot What's interesting is that, like, she goes to the emergency room. She's charged <laughs> all these bills. But the doctor actually says to her, like, that he doesn't want to take her at first. There's, like, that one part. Because she's a nut. Right. So uh, I'm wondering. Uh, what, what's did, her name? Audrey? Audrey. Did Audrey's he, a nut. Did, he, did she actually run over her foot? Because Bernadette, for all she knows, she seems very dumbfounded when they're told that, mm-hmm. like, now she pays the bills. Like, because she's just, like, whatever. But Yeah, she doesn't want to deal with it. So I'm seriously wondering... But that's what I love. Like I think that it, the doctor explicitly said she didn't need it. Right. Yeah. That's why. Because I didn't pick up on not, that until that, yeah. just now. Yeah. So like the doctor explicitly. Audrey. Audrey is one of those. She okay. She's a woman that shops at Pier One. Oh. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Because they they describe her home and it's like she's barely on that cuff of upper class. Yeah. Oh. Um. So it's upper middle class, middle aged white woman who's entitled. Yes. And I love, I like to shop at Pier One. I have a lot of things from Pier One. Same. But when I worked at Pier One, I worked there. I uh. worked there. I was a, um, I was a key holder. So um. I was like lower management. Mm-hmm. Um, these women would order, okay, if you <laughs> order a dresser that is mirror. Like, just purely mirror and with wood, like, connecting everything that's gold. First of all, no natural paint comes in flaky, like, sparkly gold. That uh, that has stuff mixed in. It it might chip off. Like, you know that. Like, it, you don't have to be an artist to not know that. And then you're ordering this, like, 500-pound dresser covered in Ugh. mirrors. It might come in damage. And you right. might have to reorder. Like... It's not. It's not like. It's not like, you're. It's not a high end furniture company. It's oh. not the furniture company I currently work at, yeah. where they like make sure it's pristine and perfect in every right. like, single way. Yeah. Like you're ordering from a box store. Right. It's pure one. It's like, pure yeah. one. It's. It's. I'm sorry. My shoulders are hurting. That's why I oh, pulled no, my straps okay. down. Yeah. Um, it's it's mass production. Right. You know. It's going to get fucked up from overseas. But you know what? There's so many effing entitled people when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like, I cannot tell you how many times I've encountered people who were like, like, okay, if I have something bad happen to me mm-hmm. where like with like when I'm ordering a product, especially a mass produced product. Yes. I might get mad. The only time I'll get mad at the person helping me is when they're very standoffish yeah. and just not trying. Like, and it's just so like above them. Mm-hmm. That's when I'll get mad. But I will go out of my way to say, I know it's not your fault. Yes. I just want this solved. Can you please help me? Like, because I get so pissed when people treat sales like, people yes. and customer service. Yes. Because mm-hmm. we've all been there. Yeah. If you like, haven't been there, get a foot up your ass. Like, oh, God. Yeah. It, yeah. It's so annoying. And that's exactly what. You're so right. That's the type of person this Audrey person is. She I hate is Audrey so much. I have a visceral hate for her. <laughs> like, and, and and you're supposed to. Right. And I yeah. get it. And I can't wait to And you know who I also hate in this who? first chapter? Where is he? Where is he? Ollie O. <laughs> Ollie O. We don't hear from him much, but Oh my god. Where? Ollie O. Uh I what my, page are you? I am on forty seven. Okay. Ollie O is talking about getting these Mercedes parents into the the school and how the school is just like lower tier because it's next to a seafood distributor. There is so much going on in this first part. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we're not going to be able to touch on all of it. Holy shit. So there's a school, like specialized hoity-toity school um, that the the focus uh, the main reason why this school works is parent involvement which bernadette yeah. does not do neither does her husband they write a check and they're done mm-hmm. you know they they do tuition and then they write an extra check and they are out right you know they don't want they don't want to be involved right that makes sense right they have a lot of shit going on mm-hmm. 
The rest of the, f- the families don't understand that, and they think that they're the weird family up the street. We well, even think about like Sue Lin. Is it Sue Lin who's the religious one, or is it Audrey? Audrey's religious Sue Lin. Uh, but is she's in the victims she's in the, against yeah, victim she's she's in a fucking cult <laughs> yeah that's interesting i don't she's the vav yeah. but the reason i bring that up is because this reminded me a that. lot of like <laughs> kind of like a uh youth group uh kind of situation where like certain parents are more involved in the or even like a church situation where some people are more involved in the church and some people aren't mm-hmm. and they're like judging them they're like they never come to sunday brunch they haven't like, made cookies in years yeah, like, for the I, bake sale i heard that their son is living in la and is dating a man <laughs> that's why they don't come to church anymore just heard about it Ugh. like um so it's just very interesting like how gossipy and like we, maybe we should talk about bernadette for a second oh yeah go ahead so bernadette it's a nut case. Bernadette is a nut, but at the <laughs> same time, like, I love her, but she's a nut case. I don't like her yet. Oh, okay. Like, I... In in, bo- in part one, I don't like her. Oh, okay. Interesting. I... See, I... I don't always agree with her, but I love... I just love, like, her kind of blasé attitude. And also, like, is this the part... This is the part where the whole um, mudslide happens, right? In part one, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh my god! Yeah, really? a lot, a lot happens. Holy shit! Because part two is where um, it's talking about Bernadette's like past. past. Yeah, yeah. So, do you want to explain the muds? So this the mudslides. There's so much. Mercedes parents, mudslides. Yeah. Helicopter parents. So, <laughs> oh god. The easiest way to describe it is that Audrey <laughs> is next door neighbors to Bernadette, and Bernadette lives in what I'm picturing. She lives kind of like on a hill in this very old building it used to be a school for mm-hmm. girls I think. yeah it's a girl's school yes yeah, so and, um, and it is on top of a hill okay yes and so um both of them have black or blueberry blackberry now i'm forgetting black so, uh, blackberry vines blackberry blueberry bushes vines. yeah so it's blackberry vines yes and um audrey gets rid of hers but apparently the guy getting rid of them is like well they're still or he he thinks he gets sort of them, and Audrey's like, no, there's more coming in. And he's like, well, that's from the neighbor's house. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. She's like, well, let's sneak in and yes. get rid of them. Which, first Fuck of all... off, Aubrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So, okay. They need to get rid of these uh, blackberry vines because uh, they are... She, is ho- she volunteers yes. to host this... Uh, brunch for the mercedes parents yes. that they're trying to get into the school to raise em- enough money to move locations of the school correct and so she's i understand <laughs> the passion behind it but the bitchery, the <laughs> bitchery. <laughs> like, no but so she tries to sneak in um circumstances happen that bernadette should be picking up b at school but b leaves early because yeah, well, I she has um she has asthma and so sometimes she has to leave class because she'll have like the, she'll have to spit phlegm out. Oh, and the teacher's like, Meh. yeah, like, the nurse, yeah, yeah, the nurse so. is like, you have to go home. The other kids are gonna get sick. Right. Yeah. yeah. So she sends her home. So of course Bernadette picks her up earlier than usual. So she's home when Audrey doesn't think she will be home. So they're sneaking in. <laughs> this is this is where I liked Bernadette. Yeah. Oh this, yeah. Because um, it that. Like, uh, she comes there and she's like, what the fuck are you doing on my property? Right. Basically, she doesn't say it in so many words because she's with her daughter. Right. Um, but then fucking Aubrey. Audrey. Audrey. Yeah. Audrey God damn it, Brittany. You, you and your names. <laughs> Audrey goes fucking ballistic. Well, because she literally like, it doesn't make sense, her argument, but like <laughs> she is so compelled. <laughs> like, she's not in the wrong. She'll never be in the wrong this audrey woman yeah it's it made me very mad i want to punch her yeah like very mad and so um bernadette uh not making the best choice in the world decides to order a poster and we'll get into who she orders the poster. so she okays the gardener to so the gardener has to bring in all this special machinery yes to pull up all the the vines yes. and he says i can't do it until the rainy season is over right you know it's like it's dangerous for us but to audrey, do it yeah and audrey's like you have to do it not next yeah. week not next month tomorrow mm-hmm. or december 10th or whatever right. date that she gave this gardener and uh uh bernard's like go ahead i'll pay for it right like, 
if you want to do that, <clears throat> be my guest. Right. And so they do it. Mm-hmm. And during the... Um, <laughs> well, okay, so... Bernadette gets a sign, which apparently this is part of it, but I don't think it is. They Audrey thinks that the sign is what caused the mudslide. Um, basically, Does she? yeah, they're so because so basically what happens is that I didn't they, pick up on that. I thought that was just the catalyst of well, the mudslide. Well, that's what I thought too, but apparently it seems that's what I sort of picked up on, and I'll explain why in a second. Okay. But basically, they're at this meeting party. What, it's what it's you, okay. Event. So. It's a breakfast for the Mercedes parents, and uh, Ollie O is organizing. And if you've read Ollie O's emails, there's grammar mistakes in it. Probably, yeah. There, there are. Mm-hmm. And it was driving me up the wall because it said get instead of gone mm. or whatever it was. So um, they organized this um, fucking uh, caterer to come in to yeah. make pizzas outside, and it's raining. But it's okay because everyone's going to be inside. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is the funniest. Uh, I laughed so fucking hard at all of this. Really? Yes. I was lolling. And That's Kevin's awesome. like, what's going on? And I'm like, please let me explain. And he's playing Red Dead Redemption. Oh, and he, yeah. he had just finished the game. He's like, I'm a little emotional right now. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't say that. <laughs> I, mean, I would say that. <laughs> so um, they bring in the kindergarten class yeah. to do a musical for all these Mercedes yes. parents. All these rich folk are milling around in this lower middle class or oh, upper hello. middle class white woman's house. Yes. And so she's like, oh, it's perfect. Blah, 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 blah. And then they hear a, like a crash. Right. And then like it was after the students, like the kindergartners play the little song or while but they're, they're still, playing. Yeah, they're yeah. While it's playing. And then all like this mudslide just goes down the hill crashes into the house and like it wipes out the caterers and like they're all fine right um but it tears it tears down the breaks windows tears down a wall and then all these like mercedes parents and mercedes parents are the, like the rich folk yeah, yeah. Uh, that they're trying to get their kids into the school look over and see this sign that it has created a dam yeah. to stop the mud flow from going in the house can you- ah so, i'm yeah i'm trying to find it so go keep going um, mm-hmm. And it says no trespassing uh especially the whatever school nats the, the nats yeah um all nats will be like prosecuted whatever it may be so uh these poor little kindergartner kids i know i know <laughs> so I... we find out all this information from a um a teacher slash psychologist who specializes in post-traumatic stress disorder yes. who is taking care of the kids um uh, like like chaperoning them to and from this event so this is the letter to all the parents yep basically saying there was a mudslide um, there was glass everywhere. I was taking your children one by one to the bus so they didn't step on glass and they didn't have boots and they didn't have jackets because we took them off to get into that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you see any uh, of the following symptoms in the next seven years, yeah. go see a special. I, that was pretty ass. funny. That was funny. <laughs> I, yeah, that was very funny. Uh, I was reading, I was like, wait, what? I'm like, all right, it's a funny book. <laughs> And as soon as I got over the ridiculousness of the first part of part one, mm-hmm. like it was just because you are in it. You're thrown into You're it. You're thrown into it like so deep. And I cared nothing about these characters in the first part of mm-hmm. part one um, and until the second part. I was like, OK, I can actually laugh at the funny parts now. Mm. Uh, but go ahead. Read the sign. So the sign says private property, no trespassing, Galler Galler. Gaylor Street Nats will be arrested and hauled off to Nat Jail. I love that she calls them Nats. Like, I think that's hilarious. Yeah. A little condescending, Bernadette. Maybe tone it down, but still hilarious. Well, because they're all buzzing around, but they're right. not enough energy to swat. Oh, God. Yeah. So you just ignore. It's, yeah, it's perfect. But yeah, so that's the whole thing that happens. Oh, um, shit. And at the, so much. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure we also get the scene where Audrey confronts Bernadette yes. and B slaps Audrey in the face. Yes. Which is I was I was hoping. Yeah, I was hoping that would I I I will say also and that I do is where like I liked Bernadette again. Yeah. I like Bernadette. Even though like you said, Bernadette's crazy. Like mm-hmm. I think we should definitely well she's crazy, but it's interesting to figure out what happened, like what's going on. Like, she's at this point she's very eccentric. 
Yeah, eccentric. Because a they word. live yeah. the, the house that they live in. We know that Bernadette's an architect, right? Um, in part one, but the house that they live in it's is an apart. absolute shambles. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, there's. Uh, there's vines, leak. gr- there's leaks in the roof. There's vines that yeah. grow out from the floorboards. Yep. Um, the like uh, parts are blocked off, and like they special created in a um a trailer mm-hmm. for Bernadette right. to like just have her own time in, right? You know, instead of fixing up the house, mm-hmm. and that was her project. Right. Like they moved into this house because she wanted it. She hated all the other houses that were just manufactured cookie cutter Mm -hmm. and put somewhere and so she saw this school and she's like that's it that's what i want right it's like what 40 acres or something like that it's a huge thing for four hundred thousand dollars yeah in the middle of washington like seattle washington yeah so i but it's falling apart yeah um so and then that that alludes to depression and anxiety and we find out that Brenda is a recluse and and she has like a I'm, I'm not gonna say a major case a minor case of agoraphobia because she does leave the house um, yes but she does not want to go to but when she leaves well, the house yeah she only go, goes to certain rooms right right she always has dark sunglasses on mm-hmm. has her head wrapped right. love like, the cover yeah oh yeah that's like true cover. I didn't even notice that yeah oh huh, good call ah, ah. like this cover I, I read that and I was like Cool. <laughs> it's like when uh somebody uh says like the title of yeah. the movie in the movie, movie title also i listened I, was, I finished listening to the book one of twilight again twilight saga <sighs> Brittany, let's talk about this oh, boy they um i when they first dropped the word twilight i was like uh-uh. but then they dropped it two more times after ah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Brittany, I just want to... I don't know um, why I did it again. Yeah, why? But you know what? I, I wanted to revisit. It's still a solid three. As good as Twilight. <laughs> Who'd have thunk, folks? <laughs> okay. I need to stop doing that where I turn away. <laughs> I, I've just accepted it. I think I've just Go accepted ahead. it, too. It's Go just weird. Go talk to the elliptical. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we should also talk about, so in this section two, we meet a character named, uh, let me actually find it, Manjula. Manjula. Oh my God, so, there's so much going on in this part. So Manjula is somebody who is from India, who mm-hmm. Bernadette is emailing. I, um, It's not explained how she, f- I don't think it's explained how she found this person, but she's Bernadette's assistant. Well, uh, it did now. say that um, in the very first email to Manjula, that she's like, my husband doesn't want me to be communicating yeah, with this. But you know what? Just take the funds out of my personal account. Right. And it's $40 a day. I hate the way Bernadette speaks to Manjula. Yeah, yeah. The, I agree. Like, um, first of all, it's all those long-winded emails to Manjula. Like, mm-hmm. she has no one else to talk to. Right, right. Um, And I get it if she's a agoraphobe. Like, right. She, she literally has no one else to talk to. Right. Um, which... Again, is why I think this is an alternate universe because there's like there's so many different avenues to connect with different people. Why is it Manjula? Like I I don't know. It just it seems a little weird. Yeah. But anyway, she gets paid twenty cents an hour. Oh yeah, it's not much. Thirty dollars a week. Oh, is what it was. I think I actually bent it. Yeah, I I did bend the page. Yeah, she gets paid um forty hours per week at seventy five USD per hour. Seventy five cents. Yeah. What did I say? You just said seventy five. Oh, seventy five cents. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I read that and I was. That's why I folded the page over. I was like, wait. Hmm. What? And this is why I didn't <laughs> like Bernadette again because she sounds like such an entitled prick. She talks about um, all all the th- like rich people stuff mm-hmm. to um somebody who yeah like, who's getting paid thirty dollars a week or forty dollars a week. You know. Well, it's even like I think also Bernadette it can like she just she kind of just throws her money around sometimes for a good reason but other times it's like like situations like this when i first read that part i was like this just doesn't feel right Mm -hmm. like just something felt wrong about it and i like i don't know it just feels weird to me i didn't think it felt weird it's just a weird relationship. Let's put it that way. It's, a, it's definitely yeah. a weird relationship, especially because Man. How do you say her name? Man- Man- Manjula. I Manjula. Think? Manjula. Yeah. Um, was very like short in her responses, and yeah. it makes sense because she's working for fucking thirty cents, seventy five cents an hour. Yeah. And well, yeah. To this entitled white bitch, 
And um, so, like, she's like, oh, can you, I know you're in India, but can you please call this restaurant to make reservations for Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't uh, satisfy, like, if they can't do that, please use the almighty internet to find reservations at another place. And, like, that's different time zones well, and, like, all that other type of stuff. It's very, it's, I hate, I hate everything that's going on with Bernadette. And- well, I'm wondering if Bernadette, like, obviously she hates the gnats, you know, but yeah. I'm wondering she's if. She's a gnat herself. Right, like, when she's with the, at least when the persona she puts on with these emails, the person that she is sending these emails out, she is herself being a gnat. She's not she, always a gnat. I don't think she's doing that purposefully. No, no, no. Oh, okay. yeah, oh yeah, no, I don't think okay. so. Um. But yeah, I just think that she doesn't realize that she herself is doing the exact thing that people, entitled yeah. people, do. Maybe I wouldn't call her a gnat because she's not being, I don't think she's like being annoying. Did you hear that? That I, was my belly. <laughs> are you hungry, my friend? No, I'm just drinking coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, you know what I was gonna say. That breakfast. Was a, that was really embarrassing. Go on. Oh, that's though. okay. I'll re-say it so I can cut it oh, out okay, for you. you. Um, what was I saying? She's not necessarily a gnat. Oh yeah. Okay. So I don't think she's necessarily a gnat. <laughs> I think that maybe like she just she comes off as a bit entitled in the emails, and I think in some ways she is entitled. Not a but not, bit. Super. Well, super entitled, but I don't think it's for the same reasons as the other women. Like. Um, I guess maybe I shouldn't talk about this yet because we get into it in further parts. But like, it is alluded to that Bernadette is just somebody in the world. Who that is, we don't know. Well, no, it does say that in this part. Well, she's oh, an architect. She, it's a, a when she went to go pick up that medicine. It, this yeah. is the first. Yes, this is the first part. Yes. So she went to go pick up medicine. Uh, because she is dreading this trip to Antarctica. Yeah, she's reading a little too yeah. much about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And like going through Drake's pass and all this ah, type yes, of stuff. Yes, I just turned to it. <laughs> um so she has um her assistant order her this really like super risky medicine. <sighs> yeah. So why? she goes to Microsoft's uh compound pharmacy, which is the only place that holds this medicine, because Microsoft, like Google, has a compound. Everyone w- lives, works and that does stuff on there. Yeah. You know? So, um, she goes to the compound and because of Bernadette's like anxiety and all this type type of stuff that it is wrong with her, like mentally, mm-hmm. she falls asleep there. Yeah. Um, and when she wakes up, she runs into the architect or is it before she falls asleep? She f- it's after, I think, because um she falls asleep, then Elgin is on his way to lunch and he sees her, he confronts her, she doesn't end up picking up the drugs, she leaves. Yes, because and that's the, when she's... the pharmacist said, I don't recommend this. Yeah. Get something else. Yeah. Um but she's we- she's so eccentric right now because she's wearing a fishing vest. That's right. Because yeah. one time on a plane she saw a fisherman wearing it and he had everything in the pockets and it was easy to just unzip, throw into the x-ray machine, walk out with everything again. So you have your glasses, your wallet, your phone, blah, blah, blah. So that's what she's wearing now along with a button-up shirt with cufflinks and like she's just all over the place. Her hair's wild. Um, It's just she's a mess and then she's falling asleep in public at a ve- in a very prestigious place where her yeah. husband is one of the top people mm-hmm. in the like in the company mm-hmm. um and then she runs into this student of architecture from a local yes. college yeah and he's like <gasps> and she introduces herself before he could say anything she's right. like bernadette fox and uh so the student is freaking out because it's the myth the legend, the legend. bernadette fox yes yeah, so so apparently there's like not like we get this um, email from this guy named Jacob Raymond to Paul Jelinek. And, He's a professor. Yes. At this school. And, oh, yeah. It says email from the guy outside the library to his architecture professor at USC. And those are, are titles of emails that are dictated by B. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, he just says that he spotted Bernadette Fox and it says there's one pic. So I'll just read this one section. Um Bernadette Fox, she was about 50. Her hair was brown and wild. The only reason I looked twice was because she was wearing a fishing vest, which is something you notice. (laughs) 
There's the one picture of Bernadette Fox taken about 20 years ago when she won her award, and you hear all the speculations about her, how she moved to Seattle and became a recluse or went crazy. I had a really strong feeling it was her. Before I could say anything, she abruptly volunteered Bernadette Fox. And so it seems like something happened where Bernadette used to be somebody in the architecture world, and then nobody's been poof. had heads or tails of her mm-hmm. since, you know, and like you said, poof, she's just gone. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because I want to talk about this real quick. At the end of this part, um, not spoiling anything that happens, but like my first thought about this book, Where'd You Go, Bernadette, was kind of like, okay, so Bernadette, in my head, I thought Bernadette would go missing mm-hmm. and they would try to figure out why. And I thought this part would be introducing Bernadette and the next part would be like, oh my gosh, where'd she go? Yeah. What did what were your thoughts like at, by the end of this part? So by the end of this part, because I know she goes missing. Yeah. Uh, because that's 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 what the synopsis says. Like, well, right, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. She goes missing, and B is trying to figure everything out. Right. At the end of this part, I was definitely invested in the characters, which I didn't expect to be because mm. I this book was such a turnoff to me. Mm-hmm. Um, in the beginning, but it. By the end of part one, you're slowly fading out from just the emails. Right. And I feel that we are going more into a novel state. So it's 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 weird. Like, it feels more um, novelistic, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, uh, going further into the book. Yeah. And um, we are missing more of B's interaction by the end of part one because her commentary is a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. Um, And like that I was missing B's commentary because I'm sitting there going, wait, where, where are we in time? Like where, where, like where she's currently missing in this part, first part. Yeah. Because B is talking about, I wasn't sick, you know? Oh, that's right. B was sick as a child. Oh, yeah. We should um, talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Bernadette had several miscarriages. Mm-hmm. Uh, B was born very premature. Um, so she had several heart surgeries. They thought she, they were going to lose her, but she survived and she's a brilliant child. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of one of the reasons why Bernadette totes on her so much. Yeah, and that, and it goes delves into that much more as further we get into the book. But yeah, yeah. like you said, um, um dodes, not totes, dodes. Oh, yeah. I thought you said dodes. No, I said totes. <laughs> okay, well, you know, same same thing, same right, thing. folks? Yeah, same Angle thing. Region. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, B is an interesting character. I I really like her too, actually. As a new I don't writer. like her right now. You don't like B? Oh, not like in this her. part. Mm-mm. I liked her just because I liked how she. I loved how she slapped Audrey. Yes, and I just think that like. For me, like, there's so many places that they could take the narrative of a smart child. Like, and I feel like with B, like, in her parts where she actually does narrate, it it does feel, maybe I, I kind of feel like she's supposed to be 14, I think. Um, yeah. It kind of feels like maybe 15 or 16, but it's believable. It's not like, what's it called? Um, I already forgot the title. Elixir. Or like, mm-hmm. you know, well, she's she 17 so, yeah. and she feels like she's in her late 20s or something. I do feel like that she is. I actually feel that she's slightly younger. Oh, than interesting. 14. So, mm-hmm. but I feel like, um, not to like. But I, it's I guess, been a long time since we've been 14. So I don't remember how I was at 14. Well, that's what I mean. I feel like 14 <laughs> is an age too, where like you said, so you thought she sounded younger. I thought she sounded slightly older. And I think that's interesting because when you're 14, you could go really either, either way, way, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I personally think that the author did a really good job at capturing what one, especially a smart child, but one yeah. might feel like, I don't think that her smartness takes over her character. Let's put it that way. Yes. And I would hate Agreed. that if it did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Later on. So. Yeah. Like she's I'm smart, sorry. but she's other things, I guess. She's like, smart. No, yeah. no, I agree with you. I was trying to, uh, trying to place her age again because oh, she yeah. t- does talk about other things but then like that make her sound a lot older and she'll relapse into being young right you yeah. know like she'll relapse into a typical 14 yeah. year old behavior um <clears throat> so you're right 
uh, not that you're saying you're wrong before, but I'm no, I just reevaluating yeah. my own opinion. Um, we come full circle. Come full circle. <laughs> So where are we in this? Part well, I'm trying one to now. think what else. We haven't talked much about Elgin, but to be fair, not much happened. I mean, we know he works at Microsoft. We know Sulin works mm-hmm. with him, and she, she, the first time she meets him, <gasps> yes. she goes on the, the bus. Yes, there's a commuter bus, yeah. and um, Elgin's on there, and he doesn't want to talk to anyone, so he puts yeah. on earphones. They're not even plugged They're in. They're not <laughs> even plugged in, and she takes it such like offense to this, mm-hmm. and she emails her best friend yes. Aubrey or Audrey, Audrey, or Audrey, right away, <laughs> saying like, "Guess who I ran into? Like, we thought it was Bernadette who was rude, but you never like should like you should have met her husband. Mm-hmm. He completely ignored me." And then uh, we find out this is this is where you've uh, learned about the dynamic between Audrey and Su Lin. Yes, because Su Lin tells Audrey about her being worried about being let off mm. uh, because there's oh, budget right. cuts coming through. Yeah. And um, Audrey switches it to whatever she cares about. Audrey. You know. Not even concerned about her poor friend. Not even concerned about her, her poor friend. And mm. then we find out that Su Lin was actually getting promoted mm-hmm. to the Samantha 2 project, which yes. is where uh, Elgin, Eldrin, El, El, Elgin, 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 is like the camp, like, the captain of like right. that is his passion project that is what he's been working on for years yeah and we'll get more into that later um but uh she's like oh i got promoted like this is awesome and then audrey brings up like dredges the past like oh ever since your divorce like i'm oh, so proud of you God. you're picking yourself up she is such a fake friend I and it drives her. me up the goddamn wall i yeah. hate her so much Ugh. Yeah, I know. I oh god, I cannot. Thank stand God. That Good one. job, B, for slapping the shit out. <laughs> See, I was seriously. You know how you you sometimes read books where characters are being stepped on constantly, and mm-hmm. you just want them to do something. And when they actually do something, it's like yeah, yes, thank, thank you. Like I'm reading a book right now with a friend of mine, um, a Jane Austen book called not one of her best, um, Northanger Abbey. <laughs> it's not a bad book. It's just like. It's no Pride and Prejudice. Um, Let but, it go. <laughs> um, but there's like this part where like this girl like has these friends who are constantly just like being asses to her. Like she like, you know, it's it's Jane Austen book. So she's always trying, not always, but you know, she's going to end up with one of the guys that she's yeah, romancing yeah, yeah, yeah. with. So she like keeps trying to dance with him and they're like literally holding her back. And they're like, you don't need to go with him. Come with us. And I'm like. Oh, oh my god like if right, they don't yeah. stop I am going to flip the <laughs> F out and then she ended up running after the guy and I was like thank you thank yeah. you <laughs> like because if she Ugh. didn't I would have been so pissed off yeah. but there are those books not they're bad books but like where characters just don't do anything and I'm like mm-hmm. oh my god should we talk about why B slaps her yeah I guess so Um, so that whole part is Audrey comes over to confront Bernadette because of the mudslide yes and just everything has been building up, you know, because running over her foot, quote, quote unquote, unquote, yeah, um, and all this stuff. And she's just so mad at Bernadette. So Bernadette's like, I mean, let me let me try to find the part so I so can read it. But. She rails into Bernadette, yeah. saying like, basically, you never volunteer. You're such a standoff like mother. Uh, and then you're go. I would never send my child away to boarding school. And oh yeah. And B is like, I want to go. And she's like, Of course you do, because your mom's insane. Right. I don't know why I said mom like a. Br- I'm a British person. Mom. Your mom's <laughs> insane. And she's like, No, I want to go. Like that was a choice. Like, oh, of course you want to go, dear. Yeah. Like it's oh. it's all that type of transaction, and she's talking down to B, yes. who is smarter than she is. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and we find out like. Bits and parts of her, like about Audrey's son, who is oh, yeah. a fucking like <laughs> drug distributor. Yeah, yeah, he's a fucking drug kingpin in the <laughs> school. Like, take stealing his mom's prescription from when she, the like the yes. thing rolled over her foot, mm-hmm. um, and then was she selling it to other people? And I guess she she didn't even notice it was gone. She didn't so even notice it. she didn't know. Uh. Yeah. So true. I didn't pick up on it until we were having this conversation because I was really wondering, like, did her foot get no, run over? Absolutely. Now, not. yeah, now I'm sure it no. didn't. But before I wasn't. Now that we're talking, I'm like, oh my God, yeah, no. there's no way. No. Um, and it's interesting because um let me see if I can find the section. Well, also with B, so like you said, she's going 
to boarding school yeah. next year. And the same so, boarding school that Bernadette went to. Correct. Yeah. And so that's one thing that Audrey says um, that, you know, like she thinks that Bernadette is tainting. Like she doesn't even yeah. worry. Like when B slaps her, she's like, she's not even like taking a bag. Like she's just kind of like, oh, like. I'll pray for you. Right. Exactly. She says, I'll pray for you. Oh, God. It's just so annoying. <sighs> and I, I would. I would love to read the whole thing, but it's like several pages long, several so pages. I I can't. But um, but isn't at one point she said like a Christian person wouldn't say those things about to my mom? Yes, let me see if I. Yes. Oh, that was great. I was like, thank you, B. <laughs> yeah. Well, she also says so. B um, says that her mom she doesn't do good with little situations, but in yes. big things like happening like mom controversial calm. things. Yes, and her mom does end up saying Bernadette's pretty calm through all of this until the end where. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, yeah. So that's it, Audrey. Mom took about five steps toward her. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Fine, Audrey said. Drop the F-bomb in front of a child. I hope that makes you feel powerful. I'll say it again. <laughs> Mom said, fuck, fuck you, you for bringing B into this. I'm like, <laughs> yes. And, you know, that's when she goes on. We love B. And then um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So um, talking about. Oh, yeah. Because B is freaking out. That's another thing. So like uh, Bernadette's like is it your heart like are you okay but I think Mm -hmm. she's just she's just amped up yeah and so uh, that's when she slaps Audrey and Audrey says I I pray for you pray for yourself I said my mother's too good for you and those other mothers you're the ones oh that's right yeah because um while they went during the Thanksgiving holiday um Audrey said that all the kids and mothers got together and didn't invite Bernadette and B. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, and that's another thing that's sad about this moment is that... Um, I don't know if that's true, though. You know, it, it, we could speculate. I, I'm assuming it is, but I don't know. But don't we don't know. I don't think so because of Kennedy. Kennedy is... That's true. Bree's best friend. Yeah. Or B's... I always B say best Bree. Friend. B's best friend. What's her full name? Oh, my God. It's really <sighs> funny. It was yeah. an impulse. It was a, it's a god. Oh, shoot. I might have to come back to this. I think that's in uh, part two. Yeah, it might be in part two. But they do say, I don't know if they say her name. Like, they say it's an impulse in this part, but I don't think they reveal it. Yes, it's it's in a letter to, um, what's her name? Her assistant. Uh, Ah, yeah. So she gives her assistant everything because the assistant is taking care of the passports, the visas to Antarctica. Like, she has the credit card information, banking information. She does all the shopping for Bernadette. Um... And like there are services that that do this. Right. So she she's doing literally everything. Literally. Like it's insane how much she's having her yeah. do. Um I'm not finding the name, Where are we but on time? um we're a little over an hour. Okay. So, cool. um but one thing that's sad about this moment with the confronta- confrontation with um Audrey is that before this, yeah. Um we see a lot of Bernadette. Yeah, and they're going the thing is, I don't so I probably won't explain this exactly, but basically they wanted to make plans with Kennedy, but it's raining so hard. I think that they yeah. can't, their just plans fall through. So yeah, they couldn't get uh, across. across the ferry. Yeah. They couldn't get yeah. across with the ferry. So they yeah. just decide to turn around. And so they, while they're doing this, um, B has put in the CD Abbey road mm-hmm. and surprised that Bernadette is actually singing. It knows all the words. Mm-hmm. And so this, this is real bonding moment. It's really nice. Yeah. And, as they're having this confrontation, the song Here Comes the Sun is playing and B and I don't know exactly where it is, um, but she says that she just never it's ruined. Yeah. It's ruined. She can't listen to it anymore. Yeah. And, and that, that uh, was very, very emotional. Yeah. Because like you see Bernadette this whole time being very um j- I, I I guess jaded's not the right word. But it's but it's getting it's it's she, very so yeah. the the sign that she um, put up was a overreaction to a small thing because we were talking. I wanted yeah. to bring that up uh, because you said uh, B had talked about her mom being very calm in big situations. So after they're very like uh, Audrey came onto the property and like trespassed, got the contractor out, blah blah blah. blah she was very good at handling the situation, going, sure, I'll pay for it. Give me right. the card, blah, blah, blah. 
and yeah, we'll get this done. Don't worry about the cost. Right. Um, and then she got into her thing and she freaked out and yeah. she's like, I want to sign that six by five in bright red with yellow letters and mm-hmm. like and I want it put on this side of the property facing them. Yeah. So every time they look out there, like outside, it's there. Blah blah blah. So like that was her big reaction to the small thing. Right. Right. Um. So uh, this moment that she shares with her daughter is very revealing of her past life, where yeah. she was very carefree. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, it's because this is at the end of part one. Correct? Yeah, yeah. This is very, um, very much alluding to her old character and the fact that she did have a mental break. She wasn't always this person that was recluse mm-hmm. in the house. Um, actually has great signs of depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Um, The fact that she doesn't wash her hair sometimes and, like, all this type of stuff. So it's very, very um, showing. Yeah. And it's just great. Yeah, yeah. And this is... This is when I started getting invested in the mm. book a lot. I will say this did pump me up a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I think right now my prediction for the rest of the book after part one, this is going to be a definite five for me. I think it will be two, uh, we'll, but we'll see, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, actually probably a six or seven. Well, okay. Let's <laughs> let me let's clarify for a second because so we talked about this with Elixir and then I was thinking the other day, I'm like, wait a minute. Our rating system is not the rating system. Yeah. So, like, when we say five, it's on our rating. Yeah. Like, like it could, like, say we it's, read this. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, say we read this and we're like, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great book, but I'll give it a four stars. However, you know, you might give it five stars on our scale. Or, yeah. you, but if, if yes, that makes yes, sense. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Our, our scale tops out at okay. <laughs> Right, exactly. So uh, everything below it, like three is as good as Twilight, right. four is Brain Candy, five is an okay book. Right. Uh, so this is, <laughs> right now this is around a seven. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, like, I don't enjoy the style. I really mm-hmm. don't. I yeah. don't. I don't prefer. And to this be way. fair, it's not for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand that. And that's yeah. a personal preference. Yeah, I understand. Um, but the way the story is being told. I'm really liking it. The first part, though, I did not get the satire of it. Yeah. Because I, I can't wrap my head around people being this way. Well, you know, I... So I don't know about you. See, you were talking about how you laughed out loud sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm, I am not the type of reader who does that. <laughs> like, I am so... Oh, really? <laughs> I'm so dense when it comes to, like, picking up on humor in books. Like, so, like, the one part I picked up on... I'm oh, my God. Remember, I've been laughing pretty occasionally and throughout I, this i laughed at some parts i don't know if i marked them i probably didn't um but there were parts that i like laughed at and i was like oh okay i get it that's funny but like i didn't like go like start cracking up you know like just um because like i guess i'm not that type of reader but i i do pick up the humor i'm like ah, oh, that's yeah. funny <laughs> yeah. all right moving on <laughs> like, <laughs> no no i i get what you're saying yeah. but for me like Okay, the interactions between uh, Manjula and Bernadette yeah. make me laugh. Yeah. Like, right after the gate, supposed that made to, yeah. me laugh. Yeah. Um, because, uh, like, it's just warm regards, Manjula. And, like, it's literally three three <laughs> sentences long. Yeah. Uh, Manjula to Bernadette. And then we go Bernadette to Manjula. And oh it's my five God. pages. Yeah, it's so... <laughs> like, I was reading that one email, she wrote, like, this is a really long one, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> like... <laughs> and, like, so this this one, this just this little reaction, uh, this interaction on page 24 through 26, um, Bernadette has asked Manjula if she's ever been to Ikea. Oh, yeah. And, like, how you go to Ikea and you have a plan and... You walk out with five hundred dollars worth of stuff because light bulbs are so damn cheap. You just had to buy them. Now this is a person that's getting paid thirty dollars a day, and the light bulbs. Ugh. They made a specific point to uh, say how much the light bulbs were yeah. in this. Um, three for five dollars, and before oh there you go. God, they're only ninety nine cents for a whole bag. Or sure, throw pillars that are filled with squishy balls, no doubt toxic and whatnot. 
but they're so bright and three for five dollars uh, that before you even know it, you dropped five hundred dollars not because you needed anything but because it was so damn cheap mm. you know so yep. and so true too yeah. so um that's what property is to bernadette right she is just buying property after property yeah. after property yep. um oh and it makes sense because she's an architect and she has the money too like, and, yeah. yeah exactly so mm. she goes through all of this and the next sentence is dear mrs fox <laughs> the items on the packing list will be sent to the gate avenue address so we know she has multiple addresses right right you know and like she went through this huge tangent of shopping and she was like, get this, that, and the other thing. I've attached a shopping list, but let me tell you about my personality. Right, right. And then Manjula is like, it'll be sent to this address. That's it. Yeah, it's like, I'm all businesswoman. Like, just come on now. Oh, yeah. She, like, I imagine Manjula has multiple clients. Right. You know, like, she's she's she has to do all this stuff for all these entitled Kunta Quintes. Oh. Um, <laughs> cunts. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, so she just wants to send off the email and get done. Right, exactly. She just wants to do it. Yeah. Now, here's something interesting I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, mm-hmm. While I was reading this, like, obviously, we talked about last episode how this is being made into a movie. Yes. And I, first of all, Kate Blanchett will I be I don't playing... know how that's going to be done. A re- well, because I literally, like, reading this, I, first of all, cannot wait to watch it as a movie. Okay. I think Kate Blanchett will play Bernadette perfectly. Like, I, like, that's how I picture her. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like my god it's like meant for her (laughs) like it's just the role meant for her and like it probably obviously it's hard to adapt in the sense that like we're not gonna be reading emails it's gonna be very different in that regard and that's okay because it's a movie but like um i think it's it will play really well with the comedic stuff Mm -hmm. as a movie yeah i don't know what your thoughts like um my thoughts on this book i the movie i'm not sure how it's gonna do i'm gonna be very interested to see how it is but in regards to this book, I highly recommend people getting the audio. And where can they get that, Brittany? They could get that at Audible <laughs> Trials. Trial? Trial. AudibleTrial.com slash B-A-B-A-T. Nice. Nice. I did it for once. <laughs> oh! <laughs> um, because the voice acting, I forget who does the the narration for it, but it's it's very good. It's very good. It, it's very... um. Um, natural the mm. way she, t- she she speaks and like is talking about the emails you get like the inflections are very nice. personal yeah and I like that a lot it's not someone just reading it through mm-hmm. and normally that's not what it is for audiobooks but I think it's it makes a lot more sense to hear the different inflections on who's speaking through via email and uh, it's done very well nice. in the audio form because sometimes when I read, I can't hear a character's voice. Yeah. Um, because I'm I I I, I don't know. It's just I do that too. Like, yeah, I understand the the way that Maria writes it. They all do have their individual voices. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. But because I can't actually hear a voice, mm-hmm. it's difficult for me to like pick up. Sometimes I, I have to go wait who's speaking, and then I have to mm-hmm. reread. Um, but hearing the audio, it's very well done. That's good. So uh, use our link in our show notes for audibletrial.com slash B-A-B-A-T. Pick up Where'd You Go, Bernadette. Yes. Uh, because it is, it so far, part one is very promising. Yeah, and I'll say also, um, yeah, when you get that, uh, when you go to that link, you'll get a free trial for 30 days. Get oh, a free yeah, audio book. You. <laughs> you know, get Bernadette because, you know, you can read along with us, listen along with us. Like Brittany said, I can imagine this would be a good audio book. Yeah. I really do. Like, And so take Brittany's advice. Get this on Audible <laughs> via our link. It's really quick. Just go to our show notes, click the button, and then you're there. Wow. Wow. <laughs> the more you know. All right. <laughs> so, um... Next week or next episode, we'll be talking about part two. Yes. Um. All of, all of the episodes for this book are going to correspond with the parts in the book. Yes, indeed. So mm-hmm. it makes it a little easier for all of us. And I will say, even though like this one packed a lot into it, it this part is a lot. But I will say that the parts are split up in a way that, to mm-hmm. me, like when I was reading this, I was like, oh, this is actually going to be fun to talk about like easy to talk about in the sense because they split them up in a way that or the author splits them up that like yes it's it's a, digestible it's, or like it makes yeah. sense like i don't know the the parts are split up um 
in regarding timelines. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you have, like, Bernadette versus the Nats. Yeah. You know, and then the next part, part two, is Bernadette past and present. Yes. Um, And then, I, I don't know the title yeah, of the I don't other parts. The next one, yeah. But it is, it's broken off in parts that, like you said, yeah. are easily digestible and that... You could see where the time, where in the timeline we are. Right, exactly. Like it's easy. Like like even though a lot happened, it's it's not like because at first I was nervous because I didn't mark so, anything. Yeah, and I was like, how am I going to talk about this? But honestly, <laughs> this is the easiest talk I think we've ever had. At least for me personally, yeah. and it's all from memory. I yeah. I mean I bent down a few pages. I marked a few things, but I didn't look at any of my tabs. Like so, yeah. definitely um, read this book though because the comedic aspect is mm. in the book. We can't like sit here and make fun of it right. because it's not really funny. But we'll in ha- a way, it's like it's not like they eat toasted. Ch- they do eat a lot of takeout. Yes, because Bernadette do. doesn't cook, mm-hmm. so they're constantly eating. Takeout. We'll make fun of that then. <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, it's harder to make fun of, but you know what? We'll find a way. We'll find a way. <laughs> but yeah, so go ahead and check out the links in our show notes to our social media accounts. You can send us an email, leave us a voicemail, all that good stuff. And that all can be found on our website, babatpodcast.com. And uh, also shout out to Katie Hartung for doing mm. our art and Kevin McLeod for doing the music. Yes, once again. Kevin. Kevin McLeod, you Thank are just you. wonderful. And of course, Katie, so are you. And <laughs> Hi, Katie. Hey, Katie, what's going on? And so with that being said, I think we're going to end our episode. Thanks for mm-hmm. tuning in, everyone. It was a fun time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm trying to make a way to make myself laugh. Uh, oh, <laughs> right. Tradition. Yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs>